Hey everybody, Darren Voros here. Today I'm with the JV Queen, Mandy Branham. I'm so excited that she's here to join me and talk all things joint venture partnerships. Mandy is an absolute expert in this category. Before we get into it with Mandy, if you don't mind, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. You can also hit the notification bell and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. And without further ado, let's get into it. Mandy, so great to see you. So great to have you here. Why don't you give everyone a bit of an intro on who you are and what you do as a real estate investor? Darren, thanks so much. Love your energy. Love your wine rack. Um, <laughs> probably what keeps me going some days. I turn to joint ventures in real estate like many other people to be able to say, how do I continue to grow? I've got these great deals, but not enough capital to make the deals going. And I was building momentum. So along the way, I realized that I could borrow somebody's money and make a return for myself and fix their return. Or I could bring them along with me and have this group of friends and like-minded investors and we're going to be millionaires together not just you know me having a portfolio and, and having these these investors so I just immersed myself in joint ventures I immersed myself in why would somebody want to want a joint venture what is the purpose of a joint venture and how do I make this so win-win that it's not about oh I don't have any money um, and I need people's money mm, it's what do I have that somebody that has the capital doesn't have and how do we come to the table to be able to say like holy crap what a good place for us to be and so I just continued on my journey to be able to build myself as an investor to be able to be uh, what what is some attributes of a great uh, partner and what are some attributes of a great financial partner and how do we make these deals come together to become win-win and I want to teach that I believe I have a pledge in 2020 that there's more money out there than there are people that you know securely confidently know what to do with that money and so I've kind of uh, created a way for me to be able to say, if you're a money partner, here are the things to look for in a financial, or if you're a financial partner, here's what to look for in a working partner. And if you're a working partner, here's how to create yourself to be very attractive to that financial partner. So my share today is whichever side of the coin you're on, you're trying to evaluate somebody to do a deal with. I want you to know that that you're going to look at it through the lens of the scope that, that you're going to look at it. Maybe you've been trying to do this on your own for a few years, a few months, and you can't do it. And you're like, I'm finally going to turn to a to a partner to be able to get this done. Maybe you want to go into a new market that you've not touched on before. And you're like, oh, I'm so scared. I don't know if I should do it. You don't have to partner with somebody, somebody who knows that market, who's an expert in that market and and come along for the ride. Yeah, I, I love what you said there, that there are so many people out there who are looking for joint venture partners, but they are not all created equal. And I think um, that is a big differentiator because somebody will definitely take your money if you have it. Um, what they do with it, uh, you should be a little cautious about. So when we're looking at joint venture partnering for our folks that are financial partners what should they be looking for in a working partner somebody that's going to manage that transaction what would be the biggest things that you would want to look for uh, in that kind of partnership yeah so again i love that we're looking at it from the financial partner let's just make sure that we understand that if you're a working partner how do you show up okay so this this can really be both sides i i what's your track record what have you done in the past you know, don't tell me about your owner occupied home. Don't tell me about, you know, your brother's place. I want to know what your history is. And I also want to know, which is a really cool show to watch for you to be like, you know, envision that this is like shark tank. And uh, then the sharks are, are watching what that investor is doing. And one of their big questions that they always ask is, are you doing this full time? And I mm. love that question for a financial partner to be asking to a working partner. Is this like your full-time gig? Or are you kind of doing this on the side from your full-time gig? Are you, you have four kids at home and you think you're gonna build a real estate portfolio. Now, as a working partner, that doesn't mean that you can't attract financial partners, but I really want that to be a defining question. You're like, how serious are you? Like, it's one thing to be able to say, and I'm sure you've heard it is, you know, there's 30 year trends in the real estate cycle. I've not been through a full trend. So, you know, what's my history and what's my vision going forward? And so what, another big thing for a financial partner to look for is, is what is the long-term goal of this working partner? Is it a quick flip? They just want in and out and they're done. 
Is it just this one time that they're like, you know, chasing the shiny object and they're in this city because it's a great deal and they've never been there before and they don't know anything about it and they live an hour and a half away and this is the, the place where they're going to invest? Maybe that's not going to be somebody. So I want to know what their vision is for real estate um, as part of their lifelong goals. Where does that fit in? Um, I also want to know as a financial partner, looking at a working partner, and I know this kind of comes with some, some growth, but what is their financial stability? Mm. Cause it's one thing to be able to say as a working partner, Oh, I don't have any money and I'm looking for financial partners. And maybe that's not quite the way that it needs to be said, because I don't, I have money just because I'm attracting capital into my business. Doesn't mean that I don't have money. Um, but I choose to be able to create a structure where I don't put any of my own money into a deal. Now we get stuck in a spot. We, you know, we had a sewer backup, we had water in the basement and it was an extra $15,000 on top of our renovations. Well, that was covered by me half by, well, actually it's a maintenance expense. It was half by me, half by my JV partner. So if you're going, if you're a financial partner going into, into a, a deal with a working partner and they seriously have no money you kind of just want to either go in the back of your mind and say, I have a backup to a backup, or maybe there's a clause in the joint venture agreement that says if there's an expense and the working partner can't pay for it, how does the financial partner kind of compensate for that? So just some high. So you're looking to be able to say, what's their, what's their full-time gig? Where do they say, see real estate in their future? And what's their financial stability as well? So those are some great questions to ask. I'm going to, you know, put the, the Shark Tank hat on. I'm talking to a potential um, uh, potential joint venture partner and they want to be the working partner mm -hmm. and they have zero experience. Uh, how yeah. can they, because I know there's a lot of people that want to get into joint venture partnering and they're going to say, well, I can't, if, if that's the criteria, how do I do this if this is a part-time thing or I'm just getting started? Um, so that was me, right? Uh, I still remember my first calls with my joint ventures and they were hours of phone calls, Okay. But I'd already done five deals on my own. Mm. So five deals with just mine and my hubby's money. We had some experience. We had some doors. And we were, you know, finding more deals than we could. Um, so as if I'm the, if I'm the working partner and I'm, a tr I'm talking to a financial partner and I don't, and I had the experience or, you know, the, the, little, the little bit of experience that I had, I'm not speculating. I'm showing them that I have my everything in the game. Here's all the comparables. Here's who's on my power team. Here's who I can ask those questions to. I might not know everything. This is a Henry Ford quote, but um, you know what? I've got a Rolodex of people, if people know what a Rolodex is, but I've got a Rolodex of contacts to be able to say, if I need to know the ARV of this property, do I have somebody in my contacts that I can just pick up the phone and say, I need all duplex sales. If I have a fellow investor that's in town and be like, oh my gosh, I'm stuck on this legalization what's the city asking for i don't understand two layers of drywall you know things like that what does that mean and who do i have on my contact list so i would be uh, expressing to my financial partner that i might not know all the answers but i have the ability to get the answers that are required because this is who my network is and you know within the network that we're connected to there's there's lots of answers out there so you're not necessarily saying that you have no you you might not have the resource of money but you're very resourceful. So how, you know, the confidence that you show up with is also the confidence that a financial partner is like, wow, this girl will do anything that it takes for me to be able to make money. Now, also in my joint venture structure, I kind of put my money where my, their money where my mouth is. I don't get paid until they get all their capital back. So it's kind of like if I say, you know, if I speculate on an end, uh, end, end repair value, and it only comes in here, it's not as if I'm getting paid before they get capital back if the number comes in lower. So, you know, truly, you're going to get all your capital back before I get paid. So the better I do for you, the quicker I'm going to get a return. And so for some financial, for some working partners, I'm sorry, some working partners, that could be a long time with no paycheck. That could be a long time with, you know, in growth mode where you're building up and you're stabilizing these properties, you're renovating, you're refinancing and, and things are kind of turbulent for a little bit, but put in your due diligence and you've come to the other side of the, the hump and then things start to, you know, transact more smoothly.
Mm -hmm. And I think you brought up a great point. And if it, if it is something where you're just getting started uh, and, it's, and you don't have, you know, five transactions under your belt, the other option is, is coaching, finding a mentor, finding somebody who actually has done this. And at least, you know, you can say, I'm working with somebody. Um, and, and there's a cost to that for sure. You're, yeah. you're a real estate coach. So am I. Um, and somebody looking to partner with us and looking to work with us, there's, there's a cost to, for our experience, essentially, for us to be able to save them hundreds of thousands of dollars, potentially, with mistakes that they're going to make. Um, and I think it is nice to uh, be able to uh, guide somebody through that process and say, at least I have a mentor in my corner that has done this many, many times if they don't have the experience of their own. Yeah, and one thing that uh, when people partner with me now, I kind of scenario it out because I, I want people to, to know that, you know, you know, they're going to come into a, search, a situ, situation and they're going to say, hey, my brother or coworker, oh my God, I'm so excited. I just invested in this asset with this girl, Mandy, and, um, and it's going to be this crazy return. It's in this city and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And they're going to, the friend, the coworker is going to ask questions, okay? They're going to be like, well, what kind of, you know, what are the paint colors? Where is she getting her kitchen? How does she know what the bylaws are? You know, all these kind of things. And my financial partners might be there like, oh, crap, I don't know all of those answers, okay? Mm. And I say, don't be afraid when that happens. This is what I want you to be able to say. This is what I, you know, if we're standing on the shoulders of giants here. I might not know all those questions, but this girl, Mandy, that I'm partnered with, she has all of those answers. So if you'd like those answers, kind of go there. Because a lot of people will get stuck being like, I need to know it all. I need to know why Mandy has chosen this property and why we're doing things, okay? I'm going to say that 95% of the investors that I work with, and here's a big financial partner click, okay? They never step foot in any of their own assets. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've, I invest in Apple and I've never been to their head office. I do have an Apple phone, but I've never stepped foot into the Apple office. And so I share that with people from, with my investors to be like, I want you to know that you are, you're buying me. Okay. You're buying me and my investment knowledge, my, you know, security of why we've chosen the, the market that we've chosen, why this, why this community, why this street, why this property, why now? Right. And so it, as much as there's a lot of questions that people perceive they might need the answer to as financial partners, the answer is it's because I partnered with Darren. Like, you know, if I were to do a property in Toronto, I don't, I won't even pretend to know what I don't even know, but you know what I do know? I partnered with Darren and he knows. Okay. Yeah, and nice. so it's a confidence level that you're able to, as a financial partner, get from your working partner and, and the working partner has to be able to give off of that confidence as to why they're investing in this property at this time. Let's flip over to the other side because I think there's a, also a perception on the, the financial partner side from the working partners. And that is like, oh, I've got this money. You're definitely gonna wanna work with me because I have money. There's lots of people with money. Um, and how do we as working partners uh, you know, stipulate or how do we decide on which financial partners we wanna bring into the system? Yeah. So I uh, tell my working partners that they need to create their ideal investor avatar. Who are they? Where do they live? What's their age bracket, their children, their marital status? Like I really want them to create this perfect avatar. Okay. Well, I attracted my avatar. He's a lawyer downtown Toronto. Um, we, he picked up the phone. We did two deals. We're doing another 18 because he just, he was like, you know what? Um, I trust you. I see you. I, I do it. This is what he said. He said, this is my first time, Mandy. And I was like, what are you talking about? This is your first time in real estate. He's like, it's my first time using a mortgage. So when you get to a certain level, you really need to know who it is you're partnering with. So I look for financial stability. I look for somebody who has trust, who understands what a partnership is. You know, when my doctor says, I'm going to refer you to this specialist, I don't question why this specialist. Okay, because obviously they have a connection and they're a specialist and that's just who you go to see. Okay, so when somebody says I'd like to joint venture, um, I'm looking for somebody who trusts me, who trusts my judgment, who sees that this is my, this is my everything. Okay, so you want to create this perfect person. Now, I did break this down on somebody the other day and I apologize, except you're welcome. Um, and they had this perfect JV partner as a factory worker and a factory worker that had two children. Now, trust me, the picture of this factory worker was a beautiful picture, but that factory worker was my, my husband. And gosh, 
he was not my ideal JV partner to the point that he didn't want to leave work to sign legal documents. He was so scared when we did our first deal. It was, you know, we had, you know, next to no mortgage on our house. He was afraid to put a second more to put a mortgage on our house to remortgage our house to use that for investing. So super nicely, these people had this great idea of who a JV avatar was, but it really wasn't an ideal JV partner. Okay, so you're, you're creating this. Um, and you know, one other quick thing is people think, oh, my brother and sister in law are two teachers or police officers, and they have no mortgage on their house, they would be perfect JV partners. You know, I have a readiness to buy readiness to invest scale. And, you know, if somebody isn't even in the inclination that investing is something in real estate is something they want to do, they're like a zero. Okay. Mm -hmm. They, they want to pay their mortgage off. They want to be debt free. Um, you're going to spend a lot of time trying to convince those people to invest in real estate, even though they might be an ideal JV partner. Your next readiness to invest, so we'll say 25% ready, is somebody who has a HELOC on their house. And they're like, well, you know, I've always been thinking about it. Maybe when my kids go to school, maybe a cottage, we can Airbnb it. Hey, those people are awakened to the possibility that investing in real estate is something they may want to do. You know, 50% ready to invest is somebody who's had a duplex in the past, somebody who, you know, um, has a second property, maybe one or two, and they are aware that the benefits of real estate is something they want. They've got some capital. Okay. So they're 50% ready. Now I only talk to people who are 50% and more. So 75% is somebody who's joined a coaching group, who's in a, uh, you know, who's in our network. They come to the meetings, they show up, they're on forums online, they're watching videos like this. And they're like, I know I want it, but I'm, you know, they still have some factors. They're fair, they're fearful, uh, time factor. Maybe they haven't convinced their spouse that this is really what they need to be doing, but they're on board. And then 100% ready to invest is seriously somebody that calls me up and says, you know what, Mandy, I told myself two years ago that if I hadn't done anything on my own, I was calling you up. And so she like lists her assets, her cash, her ready. To, and I was like, uh, okay. And we closed on a property in like 65 days. Okay. Because she was 100% ready to invest. So my share is for the working partner, uh, create this ideal avatar uh, make sure it's somebody that you see going forward would buy three to five assets, if not more. You want somebody to have financial security. You don't want somebody that's going to call you up and, you know, pick up the phone all the time. I had a private money lender that was like, is everything okay, Mandy? Can you send me pictures? I was like, no, I don't send pictures to private money lenders. Like I'm paying you a crap load of interest on this investment. Hence why I'm paying you that interest is because it's unsecured. Stop calling me. Okay, so, you know, uh, you, you kind of get a little bit of a risk reward when you're a joint venture partner, you or when you're looking for a joint venture financial partner, you don't want somebody that you're going to have to call all the time, you want them to have that trust factor, but you have to create that trust environment. And so to a JV partner, I send pictures all the time, because we're in this together, I want yeah. them to be able to see it. Let's talk about some potential pitfalls on either side. You yep. let me know, um, you know, what are the things that we should be watching out for on the working partner side and on the money partner side? So on the, uh, for a financial partner, looking at a working partner and, you know, again, vice versa is that somebody has overzealously said that they could do renovations in X amount of time at X amount of dollars and potentially, if that is a working partner, they're constraining themselves. Like, I mean, when we first started, uh, my husband and I were doing a lot of the work. Well, we were fighting. We were like, we were struggling because I'm like, why are we doing the work but not getting paid for it? Right. So being the working partner doesn't mean that you work for free. So you really want to make sure that you're not putting yourself or putting your financial partner or your working partner in a situation that creates stress. Um, that, you know, too many timelines or too short of timelines. Uh, a huge one is permits. I see too many times people are like, oh, we're gonna take the single family home and turn it into a fourplex. And I'm like, okay, cool. But in that, in the city of Hamilton, that's not probably not legal or, or, hey, I'm not the one doing the due diligence, but show me what the steps are going to be to be able to take it from a single family to a fourplex. So some pitfalls are just making sure that you've got enough level of, um, you know, you, I know you don't know what you don't know, but how can you start to ask some questions that kind of digs a little bit deeper so that you can um, get those questions answered. Uh, 
Um, mm -hmm. Another pitfall is is seriously financial financial um, going over renovation budgets, going over budgets, having negative cash flow. You know, I know people are like, well, I only want to I only want to rent to people who pay their bills. Um, okay, well, that's pretty hard to you know. Excuse me. Um, you know, are you going to be one of these tenants that always pay their bills? And everybody says, yes, that's me. And then COVID comes along, and people are blown out of the water and. And situations are, are disrupted. So you're looking for somebody um, that can ebb and flow with it. So if you if a financial partner needs to have cash flow every month because it's going to pay their bills, that might be a red flag on both sides. If your working partner needs a paycheck to be able to keep them going, that might be a little bit of a red flag too. Like again, you want this financial security. Um, you want to be able to talk to past references. You know, who have you done a deal with? You know, and what are they saying? I mean in the midst of a renovation, if there's some heated discussion between joint venture partners, you know what, that's not such a bad thing. You wanna be able to say, I want somebody who will talk this through to me. I, I take my JV partners and I go, hey, this is best case scenario. Oh my gosh, look at, we're gonna make this much money. And here's the other side of the coin. And let's talk about it. Let's talk that the tenants aren't paying, that we have you know, COVID hits and, and do we defer mortgages and like, what's this worst case? And let's make sure that we are okay with one end of the coin or the other, because there's nothing worse than finding yourself in a situation and not being able to have those tough conversations because it's, um, it's too tough. Um, a, a, a big one, what if a partner wants out? What if this, this partnership isn't going well? You know, are you going to be okay just to be able to walk away? And as, as easy as it might sound, um, you like, we're us working partners. We want to hoard these beautiful assets that we've brought to the financial partner. But is it just okay to be able to say, you know what, you can buy me out. I would rather walk away from an asset than to stay in this relationship that's just not coherent anymore. We're not getting along. So again, being able to go through that in the joint venture agreement, um, there's one of the big ones. Are you partnering with somebody who has all those things? So, you know, that understands bookkeeping and tax preparation and, you know, um, you know, um, capital, um, capital gains, how we split that. What do we do? What happens when we sell? What happens when we refinance? You want to be able to know that the, the, your working partner, your expert partner, because that's kind of the next level. It's not, we're not working partners anymore. We flip over to become real estate expert partners. Mm -hmm. And it kind of, doesn't that change the way that we talk about this? This isn't like somebody who has the, he who has the gold makes the rules. I like that. But he who has the asset in today's world, especially in this competitive industry that we're in, gosh, that property is, is ruling right now. Because if the money can't connect to a property, but if the property doesn't have money to be able to connect to. So I really love that because it's, it's win-win for both sides. So um, you just really want to be able to go into the relationship, both sides understanding that we're here for the good, but we're also here for the bad and having, um, I, I'll, I'll leave it with this because it's an end, end strategy is what is your exit strategy? Because when we enter into a property, if it's a flip, we renovate to flip. If it's going to be a long-term buy and hold, then we do certain things to be able to make sure that it's going to come in at a good refi and it's going to be good for the hold. Uh, so as long as we're all on the same lines for the exit strategy and, and understand, you'd be like, I thought we were keeping this for 20 years. And you're like, I thought we were flipping it, like sell the property. It's been six months, right? And you're like, okay, you obviously didn't, you weren't on the same lines for what you were doing with this asset. Um, so just really being open to conversation, um, communication. I always say to my JVs, you know, once you do a deal with me, get me on your text. I've answered questions, you know, from landlord issues to, hey, I'm considering another joint venture, another asset. And I'm like, well, my two cents is only my two cents. So I'm happy to be able to share that with you. So good communication is a big one. Uh, I love it. That was, uh, that was 20 minutes of gold right there. I hope everyone <laughs> smashed the like button like 25 times. Uh, Mandy, you're such, you're such a pro at this. Uh, we could literally talk hours, I'm sure, on joint venture partnerships. Um, but I want to thank you so much for joining me today and just walking through, you know, uh, from both perspectives, I think from the, from the working partner or the real estate expert side and also from the financial side, I think there's lots to learn for people that are just getting into joint venture partnering or they've been doing it for a while. There's always, you can always be improving your, your systems and your style. So thanks so much for taking some time out of your day to join us. 
If you guys enjoyed this session with Mandy, if you haven't done it already, go ahead and hit that like button below. You can also subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions for both Mandy and myself. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or check out my website at darrenboros.com. With that, I'll say, Mandy, thanks so much for being here, uh, for taking some time out of your crazy busy day. I'm sure you've got a lot going on and I appreciate you taking some time to do this. Uh, I hope that our paths will cross very soon in the near future when things uh, relax a little bit because I haven't seen you in person in a while, but I'm sure we'll get to do that very soon and, and just thanks again. Thank you. And remember that 50% of something is better than 100% of nothing. So if you are stuck in an analysis by paralysis, reach out to somebody who is awesome at what they do and just say, I am here to soak up all the learning I want to partner. Amazing. Thanks so much. That's a thanks, Darren. great point to finish on. And uh, thanks again for, for being with me here today, Mandy. Have a good day. We'll talk to you soon.